Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. So I always like to kick things off with something super interesting. And you remember years ago, there was that contest where you could name that British boat. Do you remember that, Allie? <laughs> I sure do. Okay. And it was, what was it? It was um, Bodie McBoatface. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then yeah. so now there's some nuclear sub going throughout the world as Bodie <laughs> McBoatface. Well, the reason why I bring this up is that Bright's Zoo, they have a giraffe just born. Now, the big thing about this giraffe, it has no spots. None oh. at all. And so they decided, okay, we're, we're going to have the internet name this giraffe. So I was thinking like, you know, Miss McLongneck? No. <laughs> okay. But the giraffe, they're actually saying there are only four choices. So this way they don't have some weirdo name. Uh, there's Kipiki, Furyaya, Shakira, and Jamela. Okay. That's what your choices are if you want to vote online. Um, I'm not sure if I like any of them. How about you, Allie? <laughs> uh no, maybe not for me. Mm, no. no. You know, but it reminds me of a joke. You remember this? I mean, this is a great one. Giraffe walks into a bar and he orders a bottle of Coors Light. And the bartender says, long neck? And the giraffe says, yeah, people say so. <laughs> Get it? Da -dum -bum. <laughs> hey, listen, buckle up for another turbocharged episode of Kim Commando today. Now, this is our once a week podcast. This is not the Kim Commando show. Kim Commando today on Fridays, it's when we have some fun and we bring in a guest. And joining me every week is our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. And Allie, what do you have on tap for everybody today? I'm going to dive into this really weird YouTube trend. We're going to talk about these videos that are popping up. And I'm also going to show you a really cool trick so that you can use your email, your maps, and even access your documents when you don't have any internet. Now, you're also on joke duty this week? I am. Okay, and is it a... I'm going to give this, now I know last week was a bit of a letdown, uh, or my last joke rather, um, I'm, I'm gonna go eight. An Let's eight. Say eight. It's a good solid eight. And now we also are introducing a new segment here on Kim Commander Today on Fridays. Um, not only are we bringing in a guest, and this week's guest, oh my gosh, if you ever thought about opening up your own Etsy shop, you're going to love it because this guy's going to walk us through exactly how he went from zero to $300,000 in sales in like a year and a half. Amazing. So, cool. so good. Um, but we're also introducing another new segment, and that's a letter from our listener mail because we get so so many comments all day long. I mean, literally all day long from our newsletters and on the website and in my email. And we actually even get letters in the mail. Oh. Yes. Every once in a while we do. And, you know, it's like I got one recently and it was really sweet. Um, they wanted to know, like, what computer they should buy. And so they actually, you know, wrote out all the specs oh. on an index card. And so all I had to do is circle <laughs> I only had a circle one. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it was so cute. Oh. And then included a self-addressed stamped envelope. So I just circled it and I put it in the envelope. And I was like, I mean, how could you not respond to that? I you love know, this person. Yeah, you can't throw that away. No. All right, let's get started with the news already. Now, see if you can make sense of what I'm about to tell you, because I'm not sure if I really get it. Um, about 50% of today's parents mostly people in what, their 20s and 30s, right? They say that they would not be able to raise their child without a smartphone. They say, <laughs> it's just not possible for you to raise a child without a smartphone. You just, you just can't do it. Now, um, you know, there are a lot of generations. I mean, Allie, I mean, you came out pretty good without a smartphone. There was no smartphone involved in my upbringing. <laughs> no, yeah. I certainly didn't have a smartphone. Uh, but they say these parents are lost. And <laughs> about 77 times a week, I don't know how they figure that out, is that a parent will go to their phone and ask it a question. A question like, how do I deal with my toddler's temper tantrums? <laughs> um, what's appropriate clothes for school? Okay. Uh, if you have to ask that, that's kind of a bad sign right there. Um, <laughs> or how do I get my my four-year-old into the gifted kindergarten program? Because that's an important thing to do. Uh, let's see, 60% they say they use their phones to keep uh, an eye on the weather for their kids and they shop for their kids online. Uh, a third, though, say that they've had to increase their monthly usage of their internet access since having a child. <laughs> 
Okay. So these are millennial parents mostly, um, but I have a spoiler. Okay. If that, if you're listening and you're saying, oh, Kim, you don't understand. You don't know what it's like. Okay. There are certain people in every family. Okay. The matriarch. Okay. So who's the matriarch in your family? My aunt Pam. Okay. Without flinching. No, okay. I knew it. Okay. 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 So you're going to call up Pam. Yep. You're going to email or text her if you have an issue. Yeah. Okay. So my mother, when she was diagnosed with cancer, she actually called me into her living room. She sat me down. She said, that's it. I said, what do you mean that's it? She goes, I'm passing the baton. I'm like, what does that mean? She said, you are now in charge of this family. I'm like, I remember I looked at her and went, no, I'm not. I just got the chills about oh, that, Kim. Oh, did you? I mean, oh. I, I said, no, I'm not. I am not <laughs> going to be the family matriarch. She said, she says, I am, but now you are. And so now I am. Yeah. And it's an interesting, rewarding, sometimes frustrating, <laughs> uh, sometimes just a bad place to be. Because sometimes you have to make decisions that aren't easy because people mm-hmm. ask. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so there's always that person in your family. So maybe instead of like, you know, asking Siri or chat GPT or whatever, <laughs> maybe you call up Pam, right? You yeah. call up Kim, call whoever her. it may be. And maybe you, you know what, maybe there is no family matriarch and you're listening right now. You need to step to the plate because every family needs one. And also, you know, when I was a kid, my parents would always say, like, excuse my French after they said a swear word or a bad <laughs> word. They say, excuse my French. And I'll never forget that day at school when the teacher asked if we knew any French. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I do. I do. All right. What do you got for us in the news department? Uh, mine's a little more grim. There's, there's a lot of weird stuff on YouTube, which I think is like my understatement of the week, of yes. the month. Um But there is this trend that I have seen that is blowing my mind, so I want to make sure we're all aware of it. There are websites, maybe you've stumbled upon one before, where it seems like they just copy and paste obituaries from news sites and other places and kind of gather those up. You can guess why, right? They're trying to get search traffic to those sites. They have ads on them, and they're just trying to get people to click those links. Well, SEO and search tactics always make their way to YouTube, which is one of the biggest search engines behind Google. And people are doing the same thing on YouTube. No kidding. So one of the craziest stories, there's this guy, his name is Gary Stubfield. He lived in Missouri. I saw this in the morning, Bruce. I'll give them credit. He was a city alderman. He was one of those guys that like everybody knows. And Uh so there were a ton of obituaries, Facebook memorial posts, all kinds of stuff about this guy. And wouldn't you know it, somebody made a YouTube video. It was called Gary Stubfield Passed Away. Uh, family in Carl Junction mourn his death. It was not a news outlet. It wasn't, it was just some random person. What was in the video? Someone reading the obituaries and reading all the Facebook memorial posts. So literally just sitting reading these things. Did it sound like AI or did was it sound no. like a real person? No, it's a real person. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And so the point is they're not trying to get, you know, it, they're not doing this just, you know, to, to read these things. Because they're, they're because they loved this guy. Exactly, yeah. Uh, no, there are a bunch of plugs in this video for subscribe to my channel, uh, like this video. And so it's people using things like that to get viewers over okay, to the video. Who's going to like a video and who's going to subscribe to a YouTube channel of somebody reading an obituary? Kim, I don't know, but there are so many of these and like these videos are getting views. And it's not just well-known or famous people because yeah, I guess we can make that make sense in our heads, right? A lot of people are searching for this guy. Um, yeah, maybe it's not morally the best thing to do, but but people are doing it. But what about when it's just a regular person? Like, think about if this happened to your family. So a 25-year-old guy from West Fargo, North Dakota, overdosed on drugs uh, pretty recently, and his name is Tanner, and his family posted a GoFundMe because they were looking for help for the funeral and all the expenses. Sure. Within three days... There were 11 videos on YouTube reading through everything that was posted on GoFundMe, everything that was in the local news, all the comments people had left by 10 different channels. So it wasn't just one person doing this. It was 11 videos, 10 channels, uh, not people from where he lived. A couple were from Pakistan. Like this is just people taking things to make money off of them. Now, 
The first person to notice this was a family friend, and he contacted Tanner's dad, and he talked to ABC 70 in North Dakota. He sent me a link, and I went on there, and I was just like, what, you know, where does this come from? I mean, it made no sense, and, you know, he thought right away, you know, they're trying to scam, yeah, you know. So the links, no, it didn't go to fake GoFundMes or scam links or anything. They went to the real GoFundMes, which you know is just these people trying to say, look, we were doing something nice. We nice. were spreading yes. this. I'm trying to help you. Yeah, but no, all of these videos are loaded with the same. Subscribe to my channel, all the self-promotion stuff. So who knows how much these people are making. If we look at very broad numbers, right? A video that gets hundreds of thousands of views, which some of these big ones do, not in Tanner's case, but you know, in more well-known people, probably making as much as, I don't know, $6,000 a year, which is not a ton, but if you do a ton of these <laughs> and it's basically no work, right? You're just yeah. reading things you found online. Um, it's a really weird thing though. Like if you, if you see it pop up on Facebook, it's, or if you see it pop up on YouTube, it's a pretty strange type of video. It is, it is strange to think like somebody's making money, but like you mentioned, they're coming from Pakistan. I mean, if somebody in India is making $6,000 a year, this is huge. Totally. Totally big money. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's probably no way to stop it other than just to report the video. Yeah, you can report the video. I mean, it's all public information, right? They're taking things you posted publicly on GoFundMe or obituaries, which are public. It's not illegal. It's just weird and pretty morally gray, I would say. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's switch gears right now. And let's talk about making money on Etsy. Okay, when I read about Etsy seller Tim Regal, I thought... Okay, we definitely need to get him on our shows because it's not easy setting up an Etsy business. Um, how do I know? Because I have one. Yes. I don't know if you remember. I told you about this a few months ago. I was getting my hair done. I thought, you know what? I should be making money right now while I'm getting my hair done. So I set up a whole Etsy store. But it's just like anything else. You need to apply business ethics, marketing principles, and you need to have a great product that people really want to buy. So back in 2021, with inflation mounting, remember those days, uh, Tim decided to scoop up, are you ready, seven propane tank ends for $90 off of Facebook Marketplace. He then, you know, with some smarts and ingenuity, he repurposed these tank ends as fire pits, and then he sold them in town for 400 bucks a piece. Okay, so we have a great profit right there. Well, he moved his business to Etsy, and now, let me tell you, it's the top seller on the platform. And Tim's here to tell us all about how he did it so you guys and gals can get some inspiration. And joining me, of course, is our amazing content queen, Ali Seligman. So you're going to hear or see her as well. So Tim, how did you come up with the idea to use a propane tank end and turn it into a fire pit? Well, actually, it was uh, I came across one uh, at a, a deer camp. I'm not a deer hunter, but I go to camp. And uh, a guy had this tank in off of a 500 gallon propane tank, you know, that was recycled. And uh, I thought it worked great, it radiated heat. Um, it was just a, a nice foundation for a fire pit. And uh, then I saw the ones that uh, you talked, you spoke about on uh, Marketplace. And I was like, you know, I, I, can, I can do that. I can weld, <laughs> I've got the you know, so, uh, there's other, there's other things. There's other creative parts about it, but um, yeah. So once I uh, saw that and got started, things came pretty naturally. So how long does it take to put one together? Just depends. Uh, some are as easy as uh, three hours. Some are take as long as eight. Wow. Okay. So there's some investment in there. And how much are they selling for now? Um, right now. You're looking at in between anywhere from seven hundred fifty dollars to two thousand dollars. Wow, that's good. Yeah, seriously. So there's a surprising amount of tech in this business, right? So you started, you got stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Do you still source from there? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And then had to deal with the whole Etsy thing. So I guess looking back, is there anything that you know you think, wow, I really wish I knew that ahead of time before I started this Etsy store? Yeah, there's a, there's quite a few, quite a bit, you know, as far as trying to figure out uh, backdrops and how to set up your ads and take pictures and uh, things like that. Uh, thank goodness I had friends in marketing that could kind of give me a, a, a love those a people. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That that's very helpful. Um, 
but uh, I did have some knowledge in previous work through uh, Wayfair and Overstock, and Etsy was just a lot easier. Mm. Uh, it was for me as far as a, a platform. I got paid faster, um, and it, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's a you know there's a, a lot of different platforms you can look at. There's they have a lot of learning and uh, teaching blogs and things like that that help you. Um, but, uh, really, yeah, this was really my first major foray into that. And it was, it was pretty challenging, but I think the biggest thing is, is if you, if you really put your mind to it, it it's not, it's not as hard as you think. Well, I'll tell you, I found it incredibly easy to set up an Etsy shop. Yeah. And, and now mine, we're not manufacturing products. I mean, <laughs> in all disclosure, we're not making fire pits here and we're not making... <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Tim, but one of our best sellers is a fanny pack. I don't know why, but it's a Kim Commando show fanny pack. It's like, you know, I think maybe because I make fun of it. It's like, you know, who would really want a fanny pack? <laughs> and, you know, so if somebody comes on the show and they win a prize, they always win the fanny pack. And then people are like, oh, my God, I didn't win the fanny pack. So, anyway, so I thought, you know, we're going to sell fanny packs. And so I set it up, KimCommando.Etsy.com, and then... I'll tell you, in two hours, I had a store up and running, carrying no inventory, unlike you, carrying no in in inventory. You just go ahead and hook your design up with Printful and then put it up on Etsy and then people buy it and they sh and then Printful prints it and ships it. And, you know, you're not going to make a gazillion dollars off of this. But unlike you, I mean, you have the potential to make some money. And how much money are you making at this, if you don't mind me asking? You mean year to date or... With Etsy, I've, I'm close to 300000 Wow. And I've been doing it for a year and four months, I guess. Wow, that's great. So now, have you branched out to other things other than just fire pits, or you're just, like, focused on fire pits? I'm, right now, I'm focused on uh, creating a line of fire pits that uh, I can produce, reduce that, uh, that manufacturing time. I don't want to have overhead. I don't want to have a lot of people working for me. Um, this still is a passion, but it is a side hustle. And I, I do want to make money, but it's finally something I can actually make money at doing something I enjoy, which mm -hmm. is, you know, my dad said that's like, that half the battle of life. If you figure out what you <laughs> want to do in life and, and you like it, you know, it's not a job. So, well, how, how many hours a week are you spending? Um, Right around 20 to 30, just depends on the order load. And, and then it's after hours. I have a regular job. What do you do full time? I'm a general manager at a, a large sheltered workshop. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so it's 20, 30 hours a week, 300 grand. Now, is there a particular time of year? Is it like fourth quarter? Is it summer? Is it spring? Or it's just your sales are just consistent? Summer. Oddly enough, you just I can't see people buying fire pits when it's hot. But uh, <laughs> May, June, July are are pretty busy. Uh, actually, August this August has been my record month. Oh wow! I'm not sure why, um, but usually uh, fall and summer probably my the biggest times. I would think summer is when people remember like, oh yeah, I like to be outside, and they're just they're maybe they think like if I buy a fire pit, it's going to get cool sooner, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it kind of fo follows the. Uh, home building and a lot of people oh, are buying they've got the patio finished and this was the last thing they just want to get it done you know yeah boy i wish i knew you before then because i just i just built a house and we have three fire pits and yes we actually in <laughs> phoenix arizona we buy fire pits okay <laughs> i sell i sell quite a few down in arizona <laughs> is there is there one state that you can say like this is the place for me that you're just selling all kinds of fire pits Probably, oddly enough, uh, Texas. Hmm. Um, so a lot to Texas. Um, a lot to Idaho here lately. I don't know what's going on there, but um, <laughs> I, I've and I've also shipped three to Canada, so it's uh, it's been interesting. Look at that. Um, you talked about how you've got some marketing friends, which is always really handy. Are there anything, any big changes that you made in your store where you saw like? okay, this I really needed to do, you know, better photos or the descriptions, how people found you, anything like that? Yeah, I think dialing down in my descriptions and uh, making focus them a little more. Not, I, I put way too much verbiage in them, uh, made them more straight to the point, gave them everything that they needed to know. 
<laughs> and then also gave them the option to contact me. And uh, that's one of the things that I've found. I think one of the bigger things, that's the success of my store is that I'm, I always make myself available. And uh, if I have any um, messages or, or texts or phone calls, I make sure I, I follow up and I call them usually within 10 minutes or, you know, right away. And I think that's been a, a, a big reason for my success. And um, it gets them that, you know, you, other platforms, you don't, you don't have that opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the, with, you know, with Etsy having the app, you know, I know exactly when I get an order. I know at that time when somebody's emailed me or texted me. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great tool to have so you can stay on top of things. Is there one customer that has ordered from you that, that you're like, I will never forget this order? Yeah, because he ordered like three. <laughs> and they were all three were different. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and they were big. So oh, it could have been you, Kim. I know it could have been <gasps> me. It could have been me. Where were you? Come on. So, so Tim, this is a great success story. We have a lot of folks who are listening that are trying to get their own side hustle going. And as you know, it takes a good idea. It takes a lot of hard work. I mean, this isn't something that you're just going to turn on an Etsy store like me and maybe sell a few fanny packs. I mean, if this is something that you really want to go for, I mean, you need to have the commitment to this. So do you see this ever turning into a full-time opportunity? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think so. I've had uh, several bigger outlets contact me. Um, right now, I'm just not ready. Um, but uh, the great thing about Etsy, um, you control the volume. Um, you That's can, true. it's by whatever you have an in inventory or however you want to set up your lead times. So right now I'm doing as much as I can, my family can bear. (laughs) Come on, Um, kids. We're making fire pits today. Oh, no, not again. Yeah. (laughs) If you want to go to college, uh, you need to make a fire pit. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the other thing is, is I want to make sure that, uh, that I'm doing it right. My business is right. I'm making money like I should be. Um, The economy's right. I don't want to go out and uh, you know, one of the things about Etsy is that it is a great platform that you can turn off and on. Um, you can uh, manage it very easily and um, you could, which helps you manage your money. And, you know, that's a big proponent. You've got to be able to take care of that. And, and if you go, if you get into a, a ties in with a, a bigger customer or something like that, then you're starting to manage inventory. It's a then lot. you've got, Overhead. You got yeah, employees. So. You got HR issues. <laughs> I mean, exactly. just not that I have an issue with any of that, but <laughs> it's it's a lot easier when you're the one man band. So, Tim, if folks uh, listening, watching, they want to check out the fire pits, where do they go? You go to Etsy and just type in search bar Mozart fire pits. And that's M O, spell it for everybody M O Z A R K F I R E P I T. That's it. Mozart Fire Pit. Well, congratulations, Tim. And uh, keep us posted on your success, okay? I'm feeling like next year I'm going to be like in Home Depot and see the the (laughs) Mozart Fire Pit. You might. Excellent. Thanks again, Tim, for being here. Thanks, Tim. I just want to say, if you want that official Kim Commando Show fanny pack, (laughs) you know where to go. KimCommando.etsy.com. All right. You're not going to believe this, but Tesla owners are getting trapped in their cars. Yes, they are. We have some cool stuff you can turn on in your maps. And I don't know if you've heard about this guy at Burger King, that he worked for them for like 27 years and how the internet has come to his rescue. We have that and a lot more coming up here on Kim Commando today. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. 
Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. We are just so delighted to have you here with us because after all, you know, you know, I mean, I just wouldn't want to do this just for like, you know, me <laughs> listening and I mean, Allie listening. And so what you need to do is make sure that you take the whole package. I mean, if you really want to be tech smart, if you really want to be tech aware, and if you don't, then don't pay attention to what I'm going to say right now. <laughs> but if you really want to be with the program and stay up to date and slay all day, what you want to do is make sure that you get our newsletters. And how do you do that? You go to getkim.com. And I don't know, half a million folks are getting them every single day. So, and they're just loving them. I mean, you saw all the positive comments today, didn't you? I sure did. I read a comment that was like, this is the perfect thing to have with my morning coffee while I was drinking my morning coffee. Yes. It was perfect. Was good. Then the other, there was one that I also saw. It was like, just the right amount of information that I couldn't find anywhere else. I'm like, love it. Love that. Exactly. So you want to sign up over at getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com. It's our free email in the morning. You're going to get the tech news in the afternoon, some tech tricks. It takes five minutes to read and you are just totally up to date. Once again, 100% free over at getkim.com. All right. First, I want to preface this story because I have been getting, speaking of comments, I've been getting comments from people saying, Oh, you know, I know you hated your Tesla, but I love my Tesla. (laughs) And why do you need to talk about all the bad things about Tesla, like full self-driving mode that doesn't work and people are dying in? Why do you need to talk about that all the time, right? Come on, Kim. So I have another Tesla tip. This is a tip. (laughs) Not that you shouldn't buy a Tesla, okay? We're not talking about that. But it was a 100-degree day here in Phoenix, Arizona, and 73-year-old Rick Megason found himself trapped inside his Tesla Model Y. The battery was dead, the doors wouldn't open, (gasps) and the windows wouldn't lower. The guy's trapped in an oven. Um, He managed to escape, but people around the country are being locked in their Teslas after the batteries go kaput. As it turns out, there's a secret lifesaver right inside your Tesla. It's the manual door latch. You may not even know that it's there, (laughs) okay? But you need to know that it's there in case the battery ever dies and you're stuck in your Tesla with no way to get out. Uh, They say it could be near the floor, at the base of the door, perhaps within the armrest. It's discreet, hidden by a trim piece or marked with a small label. The exact location, I can't tell you because it depends upon your Tesla and the year that it was made. So you can find it now before you actually need to say on your phone, how do I get out (laughs) of my Tesla when the battery is dead? Now, um, I had the Tesla plaid and this was interesting to me to read this story because, you know, I had never really... I mean, I, I bought the Tesla. I never drove a Tesla, never really got in a Tesla, didn't know what to expect. I just said, this is the plaid. It's going to save my life. I won't have to go to the gas station anymore. This is going to be incredible. That was your Tesla voice. Yes. It was like, going to be incredible. I'm going to, like, I'm going to live. Tesla. I'm going to live in my Tesla. You know. <laughs> so I got the Tesla and we're not going to go through all the gore and how bad it was. But um, as I was getting in and out one day, my son, Ian, I said, Mom, don't open the door like that because you're going to ruin the electronics because you're supposed to, like, touch a button and just to have it open. So I think at that point what I was doing, it's like I was opening it. You know, I was pulling the lever. Break it. Yes, I was pulling yeah. the lever. He thought, And so that was for that Tesla was that was where the lever was located. But I explained to Ian that the reason why I'm doing that is because, you know, if you come from, like, a 1946 pickup truck and you pull <laughs> that lever to get out, yeah. you know, and then you get in the Tesla. So anyway, bottom line here, if you have a Tesla, know somebody who does, just make sure they know how to get out of the Tesla in the unlikely event, maybe, that the battery is dead. Whew. All right. So you're going to talk about maps kind of to go with your Tesla, maybe? Kind of? Uh, maybe if you're stuck in your Tesla and you don't have any internet, but you got some time to kill. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, this It always hurts when this happens, right? You don't have any internet and all you can think is like, I have so much I could be doing. I have so much to do right now. Well, if you take a couple steps ahead of time, you can be prepared for that. One of my favorites is in Gmail. You can read your mail, search through it, and even like draft your replies. They get sent once you actually have connection again. But you can do all this if you set up offline mode before. It's really nice. Uh, You just go into your settings. There's a tab called offline. Click the little box, 
and then you can access all your email, even when you don't have internet. It's great. I've used it on a plane, and it works so well. It does. For docs, okay, if you want to do this for a document that's in Google Docs, a, a sheet, a presentation, whatever it is, you can do it for all the different file types. But the thing to know here is you have to do it for each individual one. Because keep in mind, it's essentially downloading a copy for you that then gets updated to the cloud. You can't just have a running copy of every single thing in your drive or I don't know, your computer will probably explode. explode. Um, so go to whatever file you want. In the file menu, there's something called Make Available Offline. Turn it on, and there you go. Smart thing to do before a trip if you're like, okay, I'm going to have some time to kill on the plane. Of course Maybe you Maybe I get bored of my book. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it for these documents. And then if you are, say you're going on a road trip, and you know there's an area where cell service gets a little sketchy, might not work for you, you can go into Google Maps and then search for, you can do lots of things. You can do a destination, you can do a town or a city name, a zip code, whatever you want. And then go in the options and there's something that says download map offline. And yes, the map will work in your Google Maps without connection. It's so nice. It is so nice. And, yeah. I, and of course, you know, Apple just like what was it about a month ago? So yeah. we have offline maps. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, the whole 10 years world. Late. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us. But yes, you can use that in Apple Maps as well. Thanks, Apple. Yes, exactly. You know, speaking of maps, I put this giant map on the wall and, of the world. Mm -hmm. And I, I gave Barry a dart and I said, okay, this is where we're going to go next. This is where we're going to just throw that dart. And you're, this is exactly where our next trip is going to be. So we're going to spend a couple of weeks behind the fridge. Just, <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, if you like quick tips like this, make sure that you get our Daily Tech Update podcast. Every single day you get a big news story and you get a great digital life hack. You're just going to love them. Just a couple of minutes. You can listen while you're having your coffee. You can when you're taking the dog out, um, when you're going potty, whatever it may be. Just make sure that you get the Daily Tech Update. Just search for Commando with a K, again, in your favorite podcast player. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about what Burger King gave one of their most hardest working employees. It's amazing. Uh, Allie's going to talk about how you can use your voice, your inside voice to type. And then we have, well, we have some listener mail you don't want to miss. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Wait, what? Add a Robinhood IRA on top, then they'll boost it by 3%. You can do that? And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. Is there a limit to the match? No limit. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfers subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial LLC. Member SIPC. Hey, just a quick reminder, this is not the Kim Commando Show. This is Kim Commando Today. If you want the show, that's Monday through Thursday, wherever you get your podcast. And if you want it commercial free, well, that's when you head over to the Commando community. That's commando.com slash community. And that's where you can sign up for that. It costs just a few bucks a month. Matter of fact, you get 30 days free. And we have been getting people saying, well, what qualifies as a senior discount? Okay, if you're over 25, I think we give you the senior <laughs> discount. Okay, just take it. I know everybody gets a senior discount. I get it. You uh, get it. I know. I, I forget. I don't know what the person's name was. She's like, you know, I'm 59 and a half. Yeah, you got you, it. You got it. Not a problem. Okay, you're 49 and a half. You can get that too. All right, <laughs> whatever you want to be. Uh, so again, that's the commando community. All right, so here's the headline. Burger King worker has massive GoFundMe. Okay, may, you may have heard about this guy by the name of Kevin Ford. He never called in sick a single day when he was working 27 years at Burger King. Okay, so the guy finally retires. Okay, and what do you think he got? A watch? No. He got a plastic drawstring backpack filled with a movie ticket, oh. Starbucks, a bag of Reese's Pieces, lifesavers, and two pens. Two pens. That's offensive. I'm offended for Kevin. You know, isn't that crazy? Yes. 27 years, never called in sick at Burger King. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He, you know, he put his kids through college and all that other good stuff. So what happened was, is that his daughter said, you know, this is not right. Well, let's, let's see if we can get some money for my dad so he can come stay with me, come visit all his grandkids. So she puts up this GoFundMe. Bottom line, over $400,000. <gasps> Kevin. Yes. So Kevin. Yes. Oh. So the moral of the story is, is that if you, uh, uh, if you uh, get a, some candy, would you believe 
uh, you can go on GoFundMe and maybe you'll make a lot of money, right? There you go. Kind of crazy. All right. So every single day we get listener email. Okay. And, um, and some of it's good. I'd say most of it's good. Wouldn't you say, what, what percentage would you say is good? Yeah, yeah. The, the vast majority. I, I don't know, 90%. Like, really, a lot of it is good. Yeah. And then, then every once in a while, you get like that outlier. You're like, where is that person in my world? Okay. So give me an example of like a really good email that you've got lately. Okay. A happy one? Yes. Okay. I love this one. Um, someone said, this is the best, all caps, tech newsletter in the universe. I have two teens. And now I am almost as smart as they are. Isn't that great? Okay, that's nice. I know, I love that. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, but not all of them are happy. Not all of them. Uh, No, we got an email from, you know what? I'm still going to call her our friend, our friend Sue. Okay, we like Sue. Sue, because you're my friend, I'm not going to say your last name on this podcast. (laughs) But she gave it. Uh, Sue said, please stop using fam for family and join the literate just because kids do that, we adults don't have to. Hmm. Sue is a fun lady, right? Sue is um, Sue's your friend who asks you to turn down the music in the car. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, Sue does that. Uh, Sue is the person who tells you that your outfit is interesting and that you are, like, really brave for that haircut. Yeah, or it's like, or whatever you did, um, inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sue, Sue's, Sue, come on. It's okay. It's okay. I hope you're still reading, fam. Yeah, and we, we want you to be part of our fam. <laughs> we do. We really do. And Come we're on. glad that you're part of our fam. We, we are. are. Yeah. All right, so I do read every single email that people send me. I do. I read every single yeah. one. So this one came from Kathy. Hey, Kathy. In, or just going to say where she is. Tucson, Arizona. Kathy in Tucson, Arizona. Great place. Okay. I think this is what Kathy sounds like. <laughs> <clears throat> I recently signed up for your two newsletters. <laughs> well, my sister just received two emails from you regarding Hurricane Hillary! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! You are using my contacts! Exclamation mark! You have no right to invade my privacy. So much for your honesty and integrity. I expect. To hear from you regarding this matter. Okay. I have to pause here just because I bet everybody else is confused. Her sister? Yeah, somehow she signed up for the newsletter and her sister got two emails from me. From you. Regarding Hurricane Hillary. Which Did you send her emails about the hurricane no. that I don't know about? No, no. You know <laughs> everything that we send out. Yeah. No. Okay. And why would we send out something about Hurricane Hillary? It I just, don't know. Okay. So she got the newsletters. So she's accusing me of hacking her contacts. That's not and, how it works. And sending her sister <laughs> two emails about Hurricane Hillary. Okay. So I replied. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kathy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hello, Kathy. Here's what I said. Pretty strong accusations there, (laughs) dot, dot, dot. I have no idea what you're talking about. We did not send any emails at all about the hurricane. If you want, you can forward me the emails, and I'm happy to take a look at it. But I can assure you, 1,000%, they did not come for me or my team. Okay. Did she reply? Uh, She did the next day. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your response. (laughs) So how did I already get hacked on this? So I wrote her back. I said, Kathy, you want to talk to me about it? Here's how you can fill out the form (laughs) and we'll schedule a time for us to chat. Oh, Kathy. I didn't hear from her. Yeah, of course you didn't. Her mm-hmm. sister got some emails. Oh, my gosh. From Hurricane. Okay. Which, by the way, I just want to tell you right now, we don't send any emails out other than the newsletters. No. Okay. Uh, we don't participate in buying anybody's email lists. We don't sell our email lists. So just know that when you send us a note, um, 
you could be part of our shows. That's yeah. just the way it is. And we love to get your notes, you know, good or bad. It really does make a difference. Uh, but, you know, just before you send a note where you start accusing of stuff, just kind of sit back and think about, <laughs> is that even a remote possibility? Probably not. No. All right, coming up, Allie's got some dictation tricks for just typing with your voice. And we've got a really big joke at the end you're not going to want to miss. The reviews are in for McDonald's hotter, juicier burgers. Let's hear what Hamburglar has to say. Bravo, bravo. What our old friend Hamburglar said is, the patties are juicier, the bun is a thing of beauty, the cheese perfectly melted. Bravo. My burger dreams have come true. You heard him, folks. These are McDonald's best burgers ever. ba 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 Bravo. Available at most restaurants in this area. Comparison of McDonald's classic burgers to prior burgers. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, and do us a great solid. Tell three folks about the Kim Commando show. Make make sure it's a friend or a fam. <laughs> yes, uh, and be sure you give us a great five star review and makes you know leave us some kind words wherever you get your podcast too, because that helps more people find our podcast. Okay, so Ali, this is a huge tech life upgrade because you know once you tell people how to do this. It becomes crazy because I actually showed my husband how to do this. And so our offices are right next door. And so now what I hear is like... All day long. Oh, I hear like, the construction project is going too slow. Period. Backspace. <laughs> exclamation mark. I'm like, oh my God. I t- it's a nightmare. <sighs> you yes. made a monster. You really did. Yeah. Are you... So Kim, something that I noticed about you pretty early on that I have always been so impressed with because it's very different for me. You are really good at talking out loud like you're writing like it's it's fleshed out it's <laughs> it's perfect it's amazing and you know you've been doing this for forever yeah <laughs> but i'm always impressed by it and you are the perfect kind of person for this or anybody that you just are like you're better getting your thoughts out in words and you want to get them on paper you can do it in you can use microsoft word you can use google docs most word programs now support this. Um, But there are some tricks to make it easier, right? So it's not just like a block of messy text that you're trying to like later edit. That's a huge mess. Kim just alluded to one of the easiest ones. You can use this for text messages too. You have to say the punctuation. So sometimes it will fill it in for you. Your texts probably do a better job of this than Google Docs or Microsoft would do. You know, it'll put a, a comma, a period, whatever. But you can also say this stuff. And if it's having trouble... You can say literal comma or literal period if you want to insert a word that's also punctuation. So say my sentence is, um, Kim, I am done with this period. And I want period to be like a word. Versus I have my period. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Well, because in this case, I have a comma, period, and the word period, right? So I'm going to say, Kim, I am done with this, comma, literal period. Okay. And then it will write out the word period, which is so nice. Um, anyway, so yes, you can say exclamation point. You can say quote. You can say, you know, any kind of punctuation you need, which is nice. You can say the words new line, new paragraph. You can say select that, and that'll select the last thing you did, which is really cool. You can say caps to capitalize a word. Uh, you can say correct that, and it'll go back to the last thing you said, and it will fix it, which is nice. Uh, You can also, in Google Docs, you can do a lot of formatting. You can say cut, copy, paste to edit things around, bold, italicize. You could change the font size. You could, like, do full-on document editing with your voice, which is really cool. Uh, You can also say, these are really handy, create a bulleted list or create a numbered list. Isn't that nice? It is. That's very nice. Uh, My one, my biggest tip, if you're doing this, you said it earlier, Kim, use your inside voice. Yes. Now, we all know that person. (laughs) <laughs> who gets a little frustrated with their technology and they're the one like screaming, oh, Alexa, come on. Or I know I was like, <laughs> I get what I hear is, God damn it, Siri. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and she doesn't take kindly to that yelling because no. the louder you are, you become harder to understand. You're probably more garbled. So speak your normal cadence, your normal volume, like you would talk to a friend and that is going to get you the best results. See, now we always have people that call the show and they want to write their life story. Mm. And so, you know, so if this is you and you're saying, you know what, you can dictate your whole life story right inside Microsoft Word and Google Docs. And you don't need to buy anything extra. Of course, it will help if you have a headset on, but you don't have to do that. And 
if you also, another great use of this is that if you, for example, have to put something in a teleprompter app or you're writing a script, a speech especially, even if it's uh, wedding vows, is that if you can dictate them instead of actually write them out, it's going to sound much more personal. So uh, we have all these tips written up on the site and how to do it. So in case you're wondering like, hey, I want to be able to do this, just head over to commando.com and then just search for voice dictation. I'm sure it'll pop up. Yep. All right. It's time now for you to make us all laugh, Al. No (gasps) pressure. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can deliver this ape. A guy wakes up hungover and he has no memory of coming home. He's in his own bed. He's fully clothed. And he sees one of the lamps on the bedside table is broken and he can tell that he got sick. Uh, And he sits up and he even sees muddy tracks leading to his bed. So he's groaning and holding his head because he feels terrible. And he knows my wife is not going to be happy with me. Then she comes in the bedroom and she has a glass of water and some aspirin. And she says, here, sweetie, you probably need this. And she said, it sounds like you had a fun night Um, (laughs) when you feel like it. I have your favorite breakfast ready in the kitchen. You lay back down, actually. I'll bring it to you here in bed. Mm. I had my mom pick up the kids so you can have some peace and quiet. And after you clean up, well, maybe we can have some fun. And he is baffled, right, that his wife is being so (laughs) nice to him. And he's a little suspicious and says, what what happened last night? And she says, well, around 2 a.m., I woke up. You were trying to unlock the door. I let you in. You staggered right past me and collapsed in bed after you knocked over the lamp. Well, I was mad, but I figured I should try to undress you. And then you yelled at me. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. What did I say? Get your hands off me, lady. I'm married. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's cute. That was very cute. I did not see that ending. That's right. So, hey, listen, if you just laughed, if you learned one thing, make sure that, again, you tell a couple of folks about our tech-tastic podcasts and also our free newsletters. Uh, It's going to be just the cherry on the top of their day, I guarantee you. And so, again, thanks for joining us. If you have any comments, just go ahead and leave them over on the website, or you can send us an email, podcasts at commando.com. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you again, me and Allie together with a very special guest next week. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. Listen up. I won't sugarcoat it. This is the longest cold flu and allergy season we've ever seen, but we're not alone. We've got Instacart. Sure, you may be a coughing snot faucet who just wants mommy, but you're not giving up! Not when cold medicine, fragrant herbal teas, and honey shaped like bears can be delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes! Now let's go win the sick playoffs! Daddy, I just want my soup. Oh, sorry, Sport App says it'll be here in in a few minutes. (laughs) Instacart for the win.